in your whole presentation you gave us, um, you didn't give us one verse from the Bible, from the lips of Jesus, peace be upon him, where he clearly defines God as being three in one, as this should be well emphasized and given special importance. Uh, could you maybe show us this verse or from any prophet even? It's fine. Well, first of all, I have to point out that the demand that is often made of a single verse to define the doctrine of the Trinity is an irrational demand, and I reject it. You do not apply that standard to the Quran. You, in your interpretation of the Quran, allow for the reading of numerous ayahs to be brought together. This is found in the Hadith. This is found in all the interpretation, the early tafsir. So you, again, are asking us to do something that you folks, yourselves, do not do. I think that's unfair. Secondly, what I did point out in my presentation is the fact that Jesus said and did things that a mere prophet could not do. Since Jesus then also spoke of how he and the Father were going to send the Spirit, and by the way, that cannot possibly be someone in the 6th century in Arabia, but is one who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and if, by the way, that is someone other than the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus is the one who sent him, uh, given that the Father and the Son send the Spirit, and that both the Son and the Spirit do things that only God can do, this is what has caused Christians, forced Christians, who believe in all that God has revealed in the Scriptures, to understand the doctrine of the Trinity. You have to reject elements of the biblical revelation, both prophetic in the Old Testament, as well as fulfilled in the New Testament, to reject the doctrine of the Trinity. And so looking for a single verse is inappropriate. Looking for Jesus accepting worship, Jesus recognize, uh, being identified as Yahweh, uh, Jesus uh, teaching with the authority of God, Jesus doing things that no mere prophet could ever do. Uh, all of those things have to be taken together, and that's why the person who honestly approaches the text of the New Testament is forced to the conclusion that those writers were telling us that Jesus Christ truly was Emmanuel, God with us.